This is my black ram, song by song. So lost that feeling. Although it was something we worked on in rehearsal, it wasn't supposed to end up on the record, but it turned out to be one of my favorite songs. It was a last minute addition to the album. We had practiced it a little bit as a band, but it wasn't really in the running. Jason and I kind of laid down the foundation of it on the sly. When Peter brought Lost That Feeling to practice for the first time, I remember really liking that chromatic line, but at the same time, kind of reminded me a bit of the James Bond theme song, which has a similar chromatic line. So the foundation of this song is a, is a whole lot of E. It's this foreboding rhythm that just kind of struts along. And then laid over that E, I add this kind of chord climb. And so I thought, I need to do something to kind of mess that up a little bit. John lays down this piano part, the do 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 do. What better than to add a chromatic descent? So after rising up, bring it right back down again to the starting point. Which creates a transition from the end of the progression back to the beginning. And it forms sort of a self-contained loop. It just flips it back to the start of the progression. I chose a piano sound because of its percussive qualities. We actually doubled that piano line to push it out in the mix. And Mike maintains the tension with that E and he just kind of keeps it going and keeps it going. For the most part, I stay on the E going from the low E to the high E and sometimes from the A to the high E. And that amps up the tension. It's kind of this creepy progression, and I think it really captures the, the darkness of the lyrical content. There is a part that I do in the turnaround when the keys are doing their chromatic descent. I do kind of a boxed climb from the A to the E, and that gives that kind of a pseudo harmony to what the keys are doing in that part. And then underneath it all, it's those drums. It's such a steady rhythm, so it's easy to just sit in that pocket. Do, do, ta. The choruses also play pretty straight. It goes into this major chord box, you know, the C, G, D, A, which, uh, which I think gives it that boost. But under the Lost That Feeling line, I have a bass part that kind of flows with what the vocal's doing. And John brings in this organ, which really amps up the energy. We used a heavily distorted Hammond organ tone to ramp up the tension. And there's a melody line added to the top of the organ part that reinforces the vocal line. When we were done recording that song, I remember John coming up to me and saying, you know that little uh, part in the chorus that you added? Every time I hear that, it kind of sounds like it's going to fall apart. And that's when I felt like I did something right. So in the middle of the tune... So the solo... I'm not a technical guitar player by any stretch. So the solo... I really live within my means as far as guitar playing goes, and I wanted a noisy solo that really would maintain the tension. So the solo, just between you and me, Pete has this pedal. It's a synth pedal. So I have this synth pedal. It tracks what he's doing and creates synth tones based on what he's playing on the guitar. I laid down this solo like three or four times, and it's a really simple solo but uh, the synth adds this kind of square tooth noise to it. And then I spliced it all up and panned it through the, uh, the stereo field to make this headphone candy situation. That synth pedal works about 25% of the time. It doesn't always work. The solo in Lost That Feeling represents that pedal doing its job correctly 100% of the time. I'm not implying here that Pete edited that solo, but that pedal works 25% of the time. I actually dig that synth guitar solo because I like the weird and chaotic. And also in that section, uh, we bring the drums out and bring it down to just this hypnotic rhythm rather than just hi-hat carrying it along and maybe, you know, the, the occasional kick drum. Thought, hey, why not some shaker? So Jason stands up to the microphones and he lays down two shaker tracks and we again like pan them hard left, hard right and that just sits nicely in the ears, you know. Some more headphone candy. And then at the end of the tune, at the end of the last chorus, we drop back into that main groove, which is just that boom, boom, tsh, tsh, boom, boom. Tsh. So John had that piano part, do 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 do. Mike on the bass, do 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 do. Peter on the guitar, na na na. It carries along, carries along, helps maintain that tension, and uh, I add in this kind of slowly climbing synth that brings it up to a crescendo. And I just locked into that. Jason just BAM! I don't play that last E note. 
They let the drums resolve that. And that just kind of leaves the listener hanging, and I, and, and I hope it makes them want to go back to the very beginning of the song and listen to it all over again. Mm-hmm.